The more segments you have for the hair, the better the outcome when it comes to rigging. However, it can be time consuming at the same time. <laughs> was so bad since the model making tutorial i made before was really hideous and trash i decided to put it in a bin and make a new one not to mention my way of explaining was pretty crap i mean come on what is this abomination really not sure how you guys understood the tutorial considering the amount of views it has could say if you do understand that but here's a more understandable one with that out of the way, my name is HYT, and you're watching a new tutorial. Finally! On the previous model making tutorial, I only explained it with Ibis paint. So here in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you two ways on making a model. The first method will apply to PC users. I myself am a PC user and I use Paint Tools i2 for most of my models, but this can be applied to any drawing program that you have on your computer. In the second method, we're still going to be using Ibis Paint, since I'm assuming that that's what most mobile users use. Unless if you're an iPad kid, you probably use Procreate. <laughs> The first thing to do when it comes to making a model is obviously screenshotting the parts. Before doing that though, you have to make sure that you copy your OC to another Gacha Club slot. That's gonna be very useful in the screenshotting process later on. Keep in mind when it comes to screenshotting the parts, you wanna make sure that it is high in quality, so that when we're gonna remove the background from the screenshot, it's not going to leave any rough edges. To make sure that the screenshot is high in quality, we're going to be using the studio feature in Gacha Club. We'll also be using the hide feature when it comes to screenshotting the parts. You can find the hide button by clicking on any button on the customization tablet, and then just click on the other option. Another thing to keep in mind, instead of using a white background or a green background, it is highly recommended to use a gray background instead. That way you won't be seeing any vibrant green or white edges in the side. Anyway, let's get started with the screenshotting process. I'm gonna start with method 1 first, but if you want to go on to method 2, I'm going to be leaving a timestamp here so you can skip to that part. Head over to the studio mode and put up your OC. Next, we're gonna have to rotate it into 270 degrees. We're doing this because we're gonna occupy the whole space of the studio. When doing this, you might want to move your OC to the very edge. Then you're gonna use the scale and increase it as much as you can. Maybe to at least 2.6, but if you can go higher than that, that would be better. I usually set mine in between 2.8 to 3.2. Once that's done, you can take a screenshot of your OC. This is just for reference purposes. Now we're gonna start screenshotting each and every part of the OC, starting off with the easiest ones, the arms and the legs. Use the hide feature so you can screenshot each and every part individually. Now, when we're gonna do the torso and the head, it's gonna be a little tedious because we're gonna have to change the colors of the OC. Which is why it would be useful if you copied your OC. Because in this process, we're gonna change the color of some parts into the exact same color of the background. Say for example, we want to have the neck and the torso first. So if the character has a belt or a skirt, we're gonna have to remove that. And then for the hips, we're gonna set its color to the exact same color as the background. When you're done with that, you're gonna have to screenshot it. Now, I know for a fact that not all of us can memorize the colors that we use for our characters. Well, if you memorize the color code of your characters, then that's good for you. But if not, we're gonna use the copy of our OC. So back in the homepage of Gacha Club, you're gonna take the copy of your OC, click on the little button right here, and then you're gonna see the extra slots tab. 
We're gonna place our copied OC anywhere here in the slots. Go back to the original one. And then you're gonna see the options below that can let you either copy the whole OC, the clothes, the hair, or just the color scheme. You're gonna click on any of those depending on which part you're screenshotting. Then you're gonna click the copy of the model. You can see that the colors are back to normal. So that's gonna save you some brain power from memorizing. Now we're just gonna repeat the process to the other parts within the torso. This is gonna be the same thing with the head parts. Use the hide option to hide the face and the hair so that you can screenshot the head base separately. When you're done with the head, you can change the color of it to the exact same color of the background so that you can take a screenshot of the other parts. If your OC has back hair, it's gonna be covered by the head. So you're gonna go edit your OC, go onto the head category, and then click on the adjust option. You're gonna select the back hair and drag it down until it's not being covered anymore. And we're finally done with that long screenshotting process. So now it's time to import the images to your drawing program. Though since the screenshots are sideways, you might want to rotate them before importing them into your drawing program. Once you're done importing the images to your canvas, we can now start to erase the backgrounds and order it properly. To remove the background of each image, we're gonna use the magic wand tool. Here are how many settings are in the magic wand tool, but you can set the settings to however you want it to be. I just personally think that these work the best for me. Once you're done erasing the background of each layer, you can now arrange the order of your model. There might be a little hint of gray spots there, but it's just easily fixable with the alpha lock tool or if you add a new layer and just clip it and just cover it up. As for the eyes part of the model, you will most likely have to redraw them since it is separated into parts. I'm just gonna show an image of how the eyes are separated so we can just move on from this topic quickly. And now you're most likely done with your model. From here, it'll really be down on you to add more things or if you want to change things up in the model, it's really up to you. But for the most part, it's pretty much done, and it's ready to be imported to Live 2D. Okay, so before I get into this method on making PSDs, I just want to say that you can actually apply method 1 already on Ibis Paint. But when it comes to using the magic wand tool in the app, it doesn't really give you the best results. If you see the results here, I tried to apply method 1 on Ibis Paint. However, it still left some unnecessary sharp edges that I don't really like when it comes to models. But if these things don't really bother you when it comes to making a PSD, then just apply what method 1 is. I also want to give you a heads up that this will be a little bit longer than method 1, but I guarantee you the results are worth it. Now, I recommend you to watch closely on what I'm doing, because these steps are kind of crucial. We're gonna use another feature in Gacha Club that is called Tint, which you'll be seeing how it's used later on. In method 1, we screenshotted the parts individually when it comes to the arms and legs. However, in this method, I prefer to do it alternatively. So there's only gonna be two screenshots for both arms and legs instead of having eight. 
Then we'll just separate them when we're starting with the PSD. Now before we move on to the other parts, we're gonna go back to the home page of Gacha Club. Then click on any button in the customization tablet. Then we're gonna click on other. And select effects. We're gonna be using the tint option and set that into 100%. Make sure that the color of the tint is black. Now you're gonna go back to studio mode. Click on the background icon. And then we're gonna change it into white. Now take a screenshot. The reason why we did that is because we're gonna use a certain tool in Ibis Paint, which you will see later. Then you have to repeat the process with the other set of limbs. Now, what about the torso and the head? We're not gonna use the tint feature here because even though some parts within the torso or the head are the same color as the background, it's not gonna be affected by the tint. As a result, it will still show the whole thing. So we're gonna be changing this manually. See what I mean about tedious? Yeah, this is exactly the reason why it's tedious. <laughs> so further explaining that, I'll give an example on how it is. Let's say you want to get the upper part of the torso first. We're going to do the same thing as what we did with method 1, which is changing one of the parts into the same color as the background, and taking a screenshot of it. Now the next thing you will do is that you'll edit your OC, change the upper parts of the torso into black, and then changing the part that you're meant to hide into white, which in this case, it's the hips. Then you can finally screenshot it. We're gonna repeat the same process when it comes to the other parts of the... <laughs> oh, this is so tiring! <laughs> We're gonna repeat the same process when it comes to the other parts of the torso. This is gonna be the same thing with the head. Although, when it comes to the face parts, you don't really have to apply this method since we're gonna be redrawing those anyway. Once we're done, we can finally import these into Ibis Paint. Oh, we're almost done! Don't worry, guys! <laughs> Anyway, when we're importing in Ibis Paint, we're gonna be doing this one at a time. So, import your first screenshot. Then you're gonna see a dialog that will appear. Just click on Cancel. And then you're gonna import the second screenshot, which is the black and white. Once that dialog appears again, you're gonna click on OK. Basically, and what we're doing here is extracting the lines out, which are the ones that are mostly visible which are the black parts. As for the white background, it just becomes transparent. Go ahead and play around and find out which settings work best for you. I personally just use these settings. Then just click on the check to confirm. Now what you're gonna do is that you're gonna go to the layers tab, and then you're gonna drag the second layer down so that it'll become the first layer. Now go on to the new second layer, and then we're gonna click on the clipping button, which is this button right here. And then you're just gonna merge it. Now, if we look closely, it's all cleared out, and there will be little to no rough edges at all. You might see a little bit of the gray background, but again, you can just fix it with the alpha lock tool, or if you just add a new layer and clip it and just work your way around there. That's gonna be the same process with the other screenshots. Once you're done importing everything, you can just separate the layers according to the order and just fix things up.
We are now done with the tutorial. Oh boy. <laughs> Anyway, that's all for the tutorial. I hope you guys learned something and hopefully this will help you out. If you did understand this and you find this helpful, make sure to leave a like. I think I should be remaking my other tutorials as well because looking back at them, I kinda explained them very poorly. So let me know in the comments below if I should remake my other tutorials and hopefully I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, stay amazing, and God bless. Siege out.